Uh, etiology is supraglottic conditions like laryngomalacia, web, sacral cyst, congenital laryngocele, and cleft are common conditions. Glottic conditions are vocal cord paralysis, web, stenosis, cryodicard syndrome, subglottis like stenosis, web, hemangioma, and trachea and bronchi, they are web, stenosis, tracheomalacia, vascular compressions, and cysts. Uh, common laryngeal causes are laryngomalacia 60% cases, laryng congenital vocal cord paralysis 20%, congenital subglottic stenosis 15%, and subglottic hemangioma 1.5%. Coming to supraglottic abnormalities, laryngomalacia is by far the most common congenital laryngeal anomaly which accounts for around 60% of all the cases. Etiology is exact cause unknown, but the factors are maldevelopment of cartilaginous structures, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and immaturity of neuromuscular control are the common predisposing uh, factors. Uh, clinical presentation, the symptoms begin few weeks after birth, which progress over 9 to 12 months and resolve by 2 years. Inspiratory study is there, which is increase in supine position, feeding, respiratory infection and exertion when the child cries. It is relieved in neck extension and when the child is in prone position. Phonation and cry are normal because the problem basically lies in the inspiration, not during expiration. Uh, there will be feeling difficulties, failure to thrive, dyspnea and sinuses are with are rare conditions. Flexible laryngoscopy findings are elongated and longitudinally folded omega safety big glottis, which fills with false posterior inferiority on inspiration. Uh, the irritants are redundant and bulky, they prolapse anteriorly and medially on inspiration. A folds are certain and there will be medial collapse of the A fold, but expiration results in expulsion of the, these structures with free flow of the air, so there will be no expiratory strider, there will be only inspiratory strider. Rigid bronchoscopy uh, is helpful to exclude other anomalies, congenital anomalies. This is a typical finding in uh, laryngomalacia, which there will be omega 7 epiglottis in flexible laryngoscopy, you can see the omega 7 epiglottis. Inspiration, there will be sucking of the airway, uh, soft tissues, uh, so there will be stider. Uh, you can see there is no uh, opening during inspiration, but during expiration, uh, the tissues will be pushed up, so there will be less form of, there will be no stider and the laryngeal unit opens. Treatment mostly is by reassurance and when the child is kept in supine prone position, uh, almost 99% of the cases respond to this. Uh, otherwise, the treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is one of the common causes to be done, and surgical management, uh, emergency trigostomy and epiglottoplasty are the surgical treatment, but when you do emergency trigostomy, it has to be kept for till 2 years of age. So, like most of the times, emergency trigostomy is not indicated, is not required. Uh, we'll see the epiglottopexy part. So, there are certain forms in epiglottopexy. There are, when there is medial collapse of the AE fold, then you have to remove the waste of a fold. Uh, where there is long tubular epiglottis, then epiglottis can be trimmed. The medial collapse of corniculate and cuneiform cartilage. This is the medial collapse, which can be treated by removing the corniculate and cuneiform cartilage. And redundant arytenoid mucosa can be removed. So this is the uh, airway can be seen. Then posterior epiglottis displacement. Okay, epiglottis is displaced posteriorly, which can be uh, removed by epiglottopexy. Then sort AE folds, you can break the bone, divide the AE folds and make it slight, make them slight larger. And this is a pre-operative uh, vision of the larynx and the post-op vision. So the vocal cord is quite visible over here. Then laryngeal cyst, most commonly seen as the cyclor cyst. It is usually asymptomatic, but there might be rapid increase in size, which might lead to worseness and airway obstruction. Uh, flexible laryngoscopy shows cyclor swelling and treatment is by MLS excision with cold knife, cautery or laser, or mycepolysin or tracheostomy can be performed. And this is a cyclor cyst which can be seen on endoscopy. Then congenital laryngocele, uh, laryngocele is defined as air filled dilatation of the ventricular sinuses, sinus of Morgagni. The types are internal, external, and mixed. Clinical features are worseness or respiratory distress, neck swelling which increases in balsal by maneuver. Investigations are plain x ray, soft tissue neck, AP view on balsal bar and flexible laryngoscopy. Treatment is by endoscopy or external excision. You can see the swelling increases with valsal bar suggestive of laryngocele as in the clinical findings. Okay, Then x-ray neck AP view with valsal bar swelling air filled space in the 
supraglottic in the larynx in the lateral neck and flexible laryngeus could be shows there is a uh, bulge in the just in the interior, interior part of the vocal cords in supraglottic wave and supraglottic cleft are, the, are also like very one of the uncommon conditions which are found as constant anomalies in the supraglottic larynx now we'll go to glottic anomalies they can be congenital vocal cord paralysis which is by far the most common condition of glottic uh, congenital anomalies etiology most of the times it is uh, unknown but cns lesions like arnold cherry malformations cerebral palsy spina bifida hydrocephalus myelomeningocele bot trauma like subacute spine and recurrent laryngeal nerve injury uh, then mirational lesions like tumors and vascular malformations all might be associated with bilateral congenital vocal cord paralysis Unilateral paralysis is more common than bilateral. Uh, so it is almost four times more common than bilateral condition. There will be hoarseness, which is breathy cry, aggravated by agitation, and feeling difficulty and respiration will be the features of uh, vocal cord paralysis. When there is bilateral paralysis, there will be inspiratory stridor, which worsens upon agitation, near normal phonation, there will be respiration with recurrent chest infections, and feeling difficulties are the common things in bilateral vocal cord call paralysis then how to manage it diagnosis by flexible laryngoscopy can see vocal cord paralysis rigid bronchoscopy can be performed to rule out other anomalies treatment is by bil for bilateral paralysis vocal cord lateralization subtotal arytenoid surgery or tracheostomy are performed and for unilateral paralysis observation usually suffices this is the picture of a flexible laryngoscopy on bilateral vocal cord paralysis. This is the adducted larynx. Okay, this is the in cadaveric position. So uh, this is not abducted. Vocal cord lateralization is done usually for abducted paralysis. This is abducted. You can see the sutures here. The laser assisted subtotal arytenoidectomy also can be performed, like posterior cordotomy plus submucosal dissection can be performed by laser assisted surgery. Then thyroid muscle vaporization and subtotal retinoid surgery also can be performed. The basic aim is to make the airway slightly patent. This is the pre-op condition. We can see the small glottic sink. Okay, and there is less space. And after post-op, you can see uh, there is the uh, adequate space in the larynx for breathing. Glottic wave needs endoscopic division with knife or laser. And insertion of the magnot laryngeal knee can be performed. Uh, basically, magnot laryngeal key is used to avoid the re -adations. Again, glottic stenosis can be treated by endoscopic division with knife, laser, or insertion of macnot laryngeal nail. So this is the macnot laryngeal kill. It can be seen. The kill can be seen here. Next is cryo cat syndrome, which is uh, which basically presents with cry like cry of the cat. There will be partial depletion of the short arm of chromosome 5. High pitched mewing is started with there. Or you can see diamond shaped glottic space. Narrow vocal cords, which are coughed and elongated supercords, can be visualized. The treatment is by supportive care and genetic counseling. Coming to subglottic uh, animalis, congenital subglottic stenosis is the one of the common condition which is found in the as the congenital animalia of the subglottic larynx. It is defined as diameter of the subglottic lumen more less than four millimeter in term infant and less than three millimeter in preterm infant. Etiology is by it is due to incomplete recognition of laryngotracheal tube during third month of gestation. Types are membranous or cartilaginous portion. Membranous is more common and mild form and cartilaginous is less common and it's severe form. It clinically presents as biphasic stridor and normal cry but symptoms appear in first few months of life. As you know the biphasic stridor is basically because the lesion is in the subglottic area. And this is the flexible laryngoscopy finding which shows narrow subglottis and radiology X-ray and CT scan both show narrow uh, subglottic area. Treatment is by most cases resolved spontaneously by four years. Then uh, trigestomy is given for significant trigestomy portion for significant stridor. Tube is removed by four years when subglottic space widens. Last laser ablation for membranous stenosis with less than five millimeter can be performed. Then cricotracheal resection and laryngotracheal plastic can be performed in patients who could not be decannulated. This is a trigastomy in a small child. The child is happy, can breathe easily, but it will be difficult for them to speak. 
then laryngotracheoplasty is performed either by reef graft or by other grafting materials and you can see this is the narrow uh, subglottis or trachea which has become uh, like bigger or which has become wider after reef graft application. Then subglottic wave can be managed by endoscopic division with knife or laser excision and insertion of magnet laryngeal keel. Uh, coming to subglottic hemangioma, it, they are basically capillary hematomas. The symptoms appear by 2 to 12 months of age with biophysic strider, barking cough, and worse cry. 50% of them have cutaneous hemangiomas of head and neck. On flexible laryngoscopy, you can see unilateral or bilateral lesion located posterior laterally in subglottic submucosa, which is pink blue in color, sessile, and easily compressible. This is a flexible laryngoscopy finding in case of subglottic hemangioma. You can see the hemangioma here. This is the hemangioma which has been compressing the larynx from the posterior aspect. Uh, its observation management is by observation by small lesions without strider, and they are basically incidental findings. Tracheostomy is performed for a significant area of obstruction. Tip is kept till 5 years, again hoping that by 5 years the hemangioma might subside. Specific treatment is by laser ablation, cryosurgery, scleric agent, or open surgical excision. Coming to tracheobronchial abnormalities, they are uh, less common. So tracheomalacia, as you know, the weakness of the trachea, which is basically by the posterior aspect or by interior aspect, and the tracheal stenosis are the common uh, anomalies from the tracheobronchial area. Okay, then abnormalities in the to happen in the laryngeal part. So thank you very much for listening or for looking at our video.